Hallelujah. Lift up your two hands and give him thanks for answered prayers. Give Jesus thanks for answered prayers. If you believe that Jesus heard you as you prayed, you believe he heard us as a people, give him thanks in return. Give him thanks in return. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lord Jesus, thank you again. Now we are here at your feet. Speak to us in these few minutes. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please get seated. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So serving the Lord is business. And business is any kind of activity you engage in for the purpose of profiting. So there's a lot of profiting that accrues to those who are serving him diligently, not slothfully. Now verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulations, continuing instant in prayers, one of the vital areas we serve him is in prayers. Tribulation there means in season and out of season. Serving God is business and it calls for fervency to make the most of it. We understand that every harvest left on the field stands the risk of being devoured by the birds of the air and the insects of the field. That's a natural fact. You leave your corn in the field, that is free food for the birds of the air. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 4, Jesus speaking about the parable of the sower, he said, Matthew 13 and verse 4, please, if you are there, praise the Lord. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, the fowls came and devoured them up. Now verse 19 brings an interpretation here of the same chapter, Matthew 13 verse 19. When anyone hears the word of, God, of the kingdom and understands it not, then come at the wicked one, and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. And this is he which received the seed by the wayside. So what are we doing? We are gathering them to church. Where their understanding will be enlightened. I'm going to give you pastors of my own heart. Who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So you will not be eaten up by the fowls of the air. We should know why we do what we do. And that's what guarantees returns on our effort. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 13 and 15. I mean 15 and 16. Now, until the farm produce gets to the storehouse, received, weighed and received, the farmer is not entitled to a pay. So we have a job. He that reapeth. Receive wages as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. So it's not about going out, it's about returning with sheaves and conveyed to the storehouse where they are preserved against the fowls of the air. He wants all men saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> When I entered the sanctuary of the Lord, then understood I. Psalm 73 verse 17. So, the house of the Lord, the sanctuary, is the center of spiritual understanding. And we need to get them there. Psalm 73 and verse 17. He wants all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 4. And you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free from the harassments of the devil and all his angels. 
That's why we need to get them into church. So we're looking at why pray for in garden of souls into church. I think the intro has answered the question. We have a job to preserve these souls from being devoured by the fowls of the air. The church is a city of the living God where he works salvation on the earth. Psalm 74 verse 12. For God is my king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. How? Upon Mount Zion, the church, there shall be deliverance and holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So he works deliverance for us in church. Remember Hebrews chapter 12, 22-24. Ye are come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. He said to the general assembly and the church, the church, the church of the firstborn, Zion, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So you are sprinkled spiritually against all attacks of the wicked one in church. That's how it works salvation on the earth. Furthermore, we understand that the church of God is where God's people are satisfied with the goodness of their Heavenly Father. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy court. The church. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of their holy temple. That's God's distribution store where he satisfies the needs of his people. Remember the Lord has chosen Zion. Psalm 132, verse 13 to 15. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. And here will I dwell, for I have chosen it. I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. And our sins shall shout for joy. That's the church. So we have a duty to bring our harvest into the church. So they can be preserved, enjoy the blessing of heaven, and then become a living witness of Christ. Very important. God has chosen to reside in church and satisfy the needs of his people. That's how we bring them in there. One of our converts came into church and after the blessings were being proclaimed, he saw his phone ringing, so after that he went out. He's been out in very big time business before everything has crashed. He has descended down to drive, ride in Okada car. He used to have tippers and all that stuff. His phone rang in the course of the blessing, but he, he wouldn't pick it. After the service, he picked the phone and he said, uh, I'm so and so, I learned to have some challenges. Can you let me know exactly how much you need? Awesome God. He was like in heaven. This was... He's not just been in that trouble. Why the first time he came to church? Something opens up for him. So we bring them in. That's why we bring them in. Now, listen, and this will bless you. In the growth of the church lies the glory of every engaging believer. In the growth of the church lies the glory of every engaging believer. Now, back to that scripture we are always very much aware of. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19 to 21. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, they shall not be few, numerical growth. I will also glorify them. I will change their status. They shall not be small. Now, their children shall be as a full time. Amen. And their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that afflict them. Verse 21. Now, 
and their nobles shall emerge from among them. Their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to, cause near, to come near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages his heart in promoting the growth and expansion of my church? Amen. To approach unto me, said the Lord. So every genuinely engaging believer experiences a change of status in return. You know the reason why? And the multitude of people is the king's honor. Proverbs 14, 28. And he that honors me, I will honor. So when you are involved in bringing multitudes to Christ, you will return with heaven's honor on your head. Stand to your feet. Amen. You are pushing that on the prayer platform. You are pushing that and reaching out to the lost. You return with honor that comes from God. When honor comes from God, forget about the devil. You can't tamper with it. <laughs> the devil can't tamper with anybody honored by God. You are honored by God, you see the end of your enemies. I will punish all them that are afflicted. <laughs> I will deal with them. They are engaging in bringing multitudes to my kingdom. They are entitled to my honor. Anyone that challenges my honor on their life, leave them to me, I'll deal with them. Glory to God. In the, the growth of the church lies the glory of every engaging believer. Not every believer. <laughs> my God, not every winner. Every engaging winner. Not every pastor. Every engaging pastor. Not every founder. Every engaging founder. Not every preacher. Every engaging preacher. <laughs> Honor is coming from heaven. And is landing on an army of men and women. Boys and girls in this church. The danger is, don't watch this happen or you become bitter. And that keeps troubling your life. <laughs> don't watch this happen. Get awake. Be part of honoring your heavenly father by bringing multitudes unto him. He that serves me, him, not they, will my father honor. Him. So it's on an individual basis. Him. With my father honor. Him with my father honor. That's why we gather the harvest into church. Lift up your two hands and ask for God for grace to maximize this prophetic season and be part of those that will enjoy honor from above. Be part of those that will enjoy honor from above. Be part of those. I will enjoy honor from above. Be part of those that will enjoy honor from above. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. We have quite a host of tracts that we're churning out all through this season. I've asked them to keep producing 500,000 each week. If it's not enough, we double it. That's the whole reason why we're here. Everybody must hear that Jesus is in the midst of the earth walking salvation. Can I hear your amen? amen? Search for your hands and ask for the breath of the Holy Ghost upon all of our tracks and our flyers that they shall be turned to effective sequels of harvest to the glory and praise of his name. Now ask for that. Come and pray. Pray, pray revive our prayer place. Pray revive our order of prayer. Holy Ghost, breathe upon these materials, breathe upon this, and turn them to effective sequels of harvest. Let them begin to ooze forth fire, 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 wherever they are found, whosoever is holding them, to the point of conviction, to the point of ingathering, to the point of salvation, to the point of retention. Now, Holy Ghost, breathe upon these materials. And confirm your word accordingly. 
In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. One condition to me is keep rejoicing as you engage. Don't be caught. Every day, every day. I'm not doing it again. Don't be caught once in the secret place of your room groaning and protesting. Don't. Don't. Don't burn off your labor. Don't destroy the works of your hand. As you do it rejoicing, it will show up as your strength and get you up upon your high places. Keep rejoicing as you do it. I've been rejoicing this way since 76. You can't break my joy. There is no insult that can touch me. I'm already insulted. <laughs> I'm heading for one glory where those folks can't touch anymore. Amen. Heaven is sweet. Many will get there, but some will get there with their crown. Don't let another man take your crown. The conditions are clean. Please engage according to the rules. Engage according to the rule. He said, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Come and say, God forbid. I must not serve God in vain. Grace to keep rejoicing. Come and lift up your two hands and get it. Grace to keep rejoicing in season and out of season as you serve him. Take it now. Take it now. And take it now. And take it now. In Jesus' precious name. Now, please listen. The evening prayer session it's in twofold. You are going out, please go. Those of us who remain here, we pray. Amen. It's all purely a matter of division of labor. Some are holding the spears, others are building. All going towards the same goal. Amen. Some, the only time we have is the evening. And so catch them as they are returning from work. Catch those who are roaming in some areas of your territory. That could be the best time to get them. So be sure you are either in the prayer raid or in the gospel raid every evening after work. And that includes our pastors, please. You don't have to be in the prayer meeting. God does not hear us because we are pastors. We are about two or three are gathered together, whether they are pastors or elders or deacons or brethren, is there in their midst. Don't have any excuse. For not having your abiding souls this time. Every one of us. Jesus is Lord. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. When we don't see you here, we know you are on the field. Not in your bedroom. When you are here, you are here praying. And getting results from the prayer altar. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now, speak to the weak, everybody. Speak to the weak. <laughs>